Good afternoon, general update from the Range Rover. A uh, few things to cover today, including uh, someone's been arrested for the loot and fire, fire and flood. We're doing fire and water, all the elements. Ice is coming next week. Um, I've got a trophy to show you, some hybrid fire stuff. That was a message I've been sent. There's something going on with taxis, and I'm going to get onto that in a future video as well. Car insurance. I know I've mentioned it before. It's coming. I've got some car updates. I've got some cars that are sold, some that are for sale. And then I want to talk about a road trip coming up later this week. Huge. And I'll touch a little bit on the Range Rover in that as well. Dino Day, the NEC show, and some updates on my Renault 10. So a few bits to cover in this relaxed Monday video. And that's a field behind me. It's not actually a lake. Well, it is a lake now. But normally it's a field and I did have to drive through quite a lot of water to get here. So floods still very much around. Range Rover has been fantastic. It hasn't broken down yet. Doing very well. Um, it is the three litre BMW engine automatic gearbox and getting 23 miles to the gallon. Got a road trip coming up uh, later in the week where I'm doing John O'Groats to Land's End as a sort of Top Gear style battle against Lee the MacMaster in his Porsche Taycan. Huge! Tell me in the comments, should I do that road trip? Bearing in mind, this is for the internal combustion engine. We want to prove that they're better in every way than EVs. Uh, do I do that road trip in my Volvo, which does 50 plus miles to the gallon on a run? Or do we try and do it in the Range Rover? Um, I'm tempted to do it in the Range Rover, but then there's a risk that financially it might end up costing more in the Range Rover than the Taycan. So do you want to see me do John O'Groats to land in, in the Range Rover or in the Volvo 850 TDI? Tell me in the comments. 850 TDI, my personal car. It's been my personal car for a couple of years now and everybody on the channel knows it, but this is a Range Rover. So maybe there's more of a challenge in that as well. It's also got a better stereo and is arguably a bit more comfortable than the Volvo. So swings around about us. But let me know in the comments. Right. More importantly than all of that, and man has been arrested in connection with the Luton Airport fire. Uh, we don't know anything about it at the moment, or at least at the time of making this video. All we know is that he's been arrested for criminal damage in relation to the fire. So that doesn't necessarily mean that he started the fire in the Range Rover, it may mean that during the fire he was graffitiing something on a wall. That too would be criminal damage. So no video about that yet because we just don't know enough, but it's odd and it adds to the oddness of the loot and fire thing, notwithstanding the fact that many, many, many of you doubt the footage that was shot from the front of the Range Rover telling me it's AI generated, that it's um, fake, and many of you doubt the number plate that is being touted as being the car that started it. Um, I've even been sent an alternate number plate by someone, which I'm doing a little bit more digging into. But there's more to say about that Luton Airport fire. So maybe there will be another video just to address all of your points and some conspiracy theories about it as well. And also the knock on effect for what it means for the wider industry and insurance. So fire is pushing insurance premiums up and so are floods have you seen that jaguar land rover in derby have opened a boat dealership um they're also stocking some submarines as you can see from the videos and the photos so what's the knock-on effect of a giant dealership having every single one of their stock cars flooded that has to have an impact in the market and it has to have an impact on insurance if not for the consumer then for businesses um odd so someone's gonna have to run some serious numbers on that one and speaking of numbers i have an trophy look what someone made for me this is the jeff buys cars eighty thousand subscriber commemorative trophy which was made for me by um a fan not fan that's the wrong word a follower so thank you very much to the person that made this for me it's even got me with my flat cap on the flat cap will be coming back when it's dried out. You will remember that it fell out of the Range Rover in a video just the other day. So love it. Thank you. That is made of one troy ounce of silver. And if you'd like your own custom silver coin, the link is in the description for how you can get one from this gentleman. So thank you very much for that. Absolutely love it. Um, can I balance it over there? We'll put it just there. Absolutely no editing in this video. Right. 
hybrid fires. I've had quite a long message this morning from someone basically saying, are the EV and hybrid fires down to companies cutting corners and rushing products to market without fully testing them? Is it the case that the EV hype is so strong that companies have decided we must get something on the market and they've cut corners, they've bought substandard products that have not been tested and thrown them onto the marketplace for us, essentially, the, the, the buying public, to be the guinea pigs? Is that why we're having so many of these fires? And he makes a really good point that he doesn't actually remember the early Toyota Prius catching fire. Now, I think this is also to do with different battery technology. I think the early Prius is very different to the batteries that we've got today, but it's a very good point. Is all Are all of these EV and hybrid fires effectively corporate negligence due to rushing to market with a product that wasn't quite ready? Good point, I like that one. Uh, another email I've had, and I will be making a bigger video about this one, taxi drivers um, are councils pushing small businesses too far this is not the first time i've seen a post like this so bcp council has told all us taxi and private hire drivers that next year they will no longer license any vehicle that does not meet euro 6 standards so what that means is taxi drivers who own vehicles that are not euro 6 are going to have to replace their vehicles at great cost. There are waiting lists between 6 and 12 months for some new cars, so this seems insensitive at best. Many drivers are now thinking of leaving the trade because of Brexit and COVID. We currently have around 1,200 drivers compared to 2,400 before. 90% of cars are Euro 5, so they're still pretty clean, and many of these vehicles will be scrapped as it's hard to sell an ex-taxi. So, we are going to save the planet by mandating, there's that word coming up again, mandate. We're going to mandate, we're going to force you to spend your hard earned money on newer, cleaner cars. And in the process, you're going to scrap your old one, even though there was nothing wrong with it. And the process of making the new car creates more bad stuff into the environment when it was more environmentally sound to just keep your old one going. Brilliant. More utter backwards nonsense from councillors who are either on the payroll of nefarious organisations or who do not understand the basic logic of, well, life, I suppose. Um, we need to kick back against councils. If your local council is doing mental stuff in the name of net zero, like saying we're going to replace all of the council bin lorries with electric ones that don't work, then you need to be writing and getting involved in your local council meetings. I even noticed by me the other day, there's a big banner that's gone up advertising for a town meeting about whether planning permission should be given to fields for food or solar panels. People are starting to, I don't want to say wake up because it's not quite the right term, but people are starting to realise that the authorities are pushing stuff that goes against basic common sense on us. And I think common sense is one of the things that can help us win the day. Basic common sense and a basic understanding of uh, stuff what makes sense seems to be lacking everywhere. So we need more of it, basically. We need more common sense. Mitsubishi Outlander going through the flood. Is she going to make it through or is she going to reverse back? She's gone in fast. We will find out. She's reversing. <laughs> anyway, so thank you very much for sending me that message. I do think it's important that people send me this sort of stuff. I know that there's some weird stuff going on with taxes at the minute. So, yeah, keep sending it. Absolutely. That would have been good because that's a plug-in hybrid Mitsubishi Outlander. And I would love to have um, filmed her broken down with me rescuing her in the middle of that flood in my old and polluting Range Rover. But sadly, that's not to be because she's reversed out of it and is now going back the other way. I'll film what that looks like that way in a minute. I'll turn around and do a loop so you can see what she just failed on because my Range Rover went through it. Right. Speaking of vehicles failing in floods, this video's got a bit rambly. I apologise. Insurance. Um, I am doing a video on insurance, but basically this is what I've summarised so far for what will be going in the video. You can't insure an EV. Big cities now have insurance dead spots where you can't insure any car. 
Sports and prestige car specialists are having cars returned to them because customers can't insure them, which means some sports and prestige specialists are getting out of the game and deciding that they no longer want to sell M3s, Audi S3s and Range Rovers because their usual clientele now can't afford the insurance on them. Range Rovers are being stolen at such a rate that I've even heard an anecdote of a Range Rover owner's quote going from £1,500 a year to £17,000 a year, and it's not getting any better. So, a bigger video on car insurance is coming later in the week. Let me know your insurance woes in the comments, because I know many of you are getting hammered with massive renewal quotes, and this is happening across the board. So, something's going on with car insurance, and I've got quite a lot to say about that in a future video. Right. Car updates. The Smithy Volvo is sold. The Mercedes SL is sold. The BMW 320 is sold. I have in my fleet at the moment the Ford Fiesta, which is for sale. The Volvo 850, which is currently with a specialist having had some work done. The Range Rover. My Volvo 850 that needs some stickers. And my Renault 10. I've got six. I thought I only had five, but as I've counted them out to you, I do have six. I'd like to sell my Fiesta. It's a thousand pounds, so buy that. And the Volvo 850, I will be doing something special with that to sticker it. There is one more car that hasn't been on the channel anywhere yet, or even on the on the second channel, which is called Cars Jeff Buys. So you should go and subscribe to it. That's my Mercedes Benz W124 230TE Estate possibly one of the best in the country, bought from a subscriber on the basis that it was out of MOT and it would just need um, a fresh ticket so I could send it to auction. And then it had a rather epic MOT fail, which I've been working on, and that car is going to be going up to Anglia car auctions, hopefully, fingers crossed, if it gets an MOT on, which should be any day now. Um, the Range Rover is still here, as you know. I quite like it, as you can probably tell. And there's a road trip coming up later this week with Lee, the MacMaster. We are doing John O'Groats to Land's End. There will be some challenges along the way, and I need to decide if I'm doing it in my Volvo 850 TDI, which would make sense because it was always the plan to use the Volvo, but it might be fun to do it in a Range Rover. But the best I've had out of this was 27 miles to the gallon. So from a maths point of view, I really don't want to say to the internet, if you want to do an affordable road trip, use a Porsche Taycan. So maybe best to use the Volvo for that one. Uh, Dino Day is coming up, 5th of November. If you want to come and see some cars on the Dino. Come and hang out. All the details, again, are in the description. It is technically sold out, but I can probably put a couple more spaces on if you want to come. 50 quid, come and Dino your car, eat some coffee, eat a burger, hang out with some blokes and talk cars. It'll be fun. Joseph Lloyd Vehicle Consulting is coming as well, and he will be filming. So it will, appear, it will be appearing on at least two channels. The NEC November Classic Car Show. I'm going to try and get a stand for that, and I'm going to get a deck chair, and I'm going to sell merchandise. So uh, mugs, basically. I'm going to order some new mugs. And if I owe you a mug, if you never got yours, please send me an email, because I'm sure there's two people that never got theirs due to, like, Royal Mail not delivering them. So... If you're missing a Jeff Buys Cars mug, send me your order number and I'll double check it because it could be that there's some out there that haven't got them. And then I've got down here, update on the Renault 10. Well, I've ordered my parts from France and I've got to pay extra customs because we're now no longer in the EU. So my £270 parts order, uh, there's £70 of customs to go on that as well. So that is general update for today. Lots more coming later in the week and a busy week with a big road trip at the end. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. And that's just me showing, showing you my trophy again. Um, yeah, 80,000 subscribers. Who would have thought? It's now 85,000. Actually, it might be 86,000 now. 86,000 people watching me sat in my car making videos. Right, let's drive back through this flood and go fetch the kids from school. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>
and the phone immediately fell off. We've gone up to high mode. We're on high mode. 